I now introduce GIP sampling, another randomized algorithm for motif finding. And GIP sampling works somewhat similarly to randomized motif search. The biggest difference is that randomized motif search is a rather reckless algorithm. It can actually change all found motifs at every iteration, depending on to what are profile most probable k-mers. It is, first, it allows it to move very quickly in the space of the solutions, but there is a danger that you already came close to the correct motif and then jump away from this because randomized motif search moves so fastly through the space of all possible motif. Gibb sampler is more conscious. It actually changes at every step only one of the chosen motifs. And the slide shows the key difference between randomized motif search and Gibb sampler. Instead of showing you the pseudocode for the Gibbs sampler, let me show you first how it works. Let's first select, as before, motifs uh, shown in bold at this slide randomly in the set of DNA strings. As before, blue elements show implanted motifs and bold element showed motifs, random motifs that we selected. After we've done it, let's do something strange. Let's actually remove one of the found motifs along with the sequence it belongs to. In our example, we remove third motif and remove the third DNA sequence from consideration. So we'll consider the resulting set of just four motifs and build the count matrix based on this set. And then afterwards, construct profile matrix based on this count matrix. And after we constructed the profile matrix, we will calculate the probability of all k-mers in the deleted string. Afterwards, we will do the following, again, relying heavily on rolling the dice. There are seven probabilities we computed. And we will roll a seven-sided dice according to probabilities we computed. It will be heavily loaded dice with this probability of sides proportional to the probabilities that we computed. After we toss this dice, we choose new starting position of the motif and proceed in this way. This is a new substituted position in the deleted sequence. So that's how it works. And then, of course, it iterates until motifs keep improving or until certain number of iterations, let's say 100,000 iterations. So the outline of Gibbs sampler, we randomly select a camera in each sequence, as before. We randomly choose one of selected cameras from sequence called sequence star and remove it from the set of motifs. We create profile from the remaining motifs. For each camera at the position I in sequence, we compute its probability of being generated by profile resulting in n minus k plus 1 probabilities. Afterwards, we generate a coin with n minus k plus 1 sides, whose probabilities of sides are proportional to probabilities we computed. We roll this, not coin, but dice. And depending on the outcome of the dice, we return back this motif number i uh, to the sequence that we remove, and we iterate. So let's once again look at how Gibbs sampler work. Let's assume that we've done the first stages and we are about to generate the probabilities of every k in the sequence. I'm still considering the same example I considered before. Now we generated our seven probabilities, but now let's pay attention to what these probabilities are. And it turned out that six out of seven probabilities are actually zeros. Should we roll a one-sided dice? Four centuries ago, Oliver Cromwell warned us against rolling one-sided dice. He told in his famous appeal to the court of Scotland, uh, uh, trying to convince them that their alliance with the king was an error. He said, I beseech you, in the bowels of Christ, think it possible that you may be mistaken. 
Cromwell rule in statistics imply that the use of probabilities zero and ones should be avoided unless we talk about purely logical statement. Thus, we should actually give a little probability even to extremely unlikely event. For example, we should give small probability to the fact that the sun won't rise tomorrow.